Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Nicole with Made From Scrap and today I'm going to do a little walkthrough and then followed by the tutorial for this embellishment box. I've made this one with the Heartfelt Creations Friendship Rose Collection. That's available at Country Craft Creations. So it's this beautiful paper. And then I used the, for the bottom of the box, I used a gift bag. So I picked up a few gift bags and from my local store, I looked for ones that have a pattern that I can interchange uh, vertically up or down. So this could go like this or this could go like this. Um, it obviously can't go sideways um, most likely, but maybe you're okay with that. When I'm using these bags, I did a tutorial for a traveler's notebook cover. Um, so that you could use this for as well. But in this case, I picked up two of these bags and then I would say to you to make sure that you understand that whatever the bottom of the bag is, so this one measures five inches in width and 10 inches in height, this is gonna be the size of your box. And then the height of your box is basically going to be half of this bottom width. Or you can measure it this way and say that it's essentially gonna be two and a half inches in height. Uh, because the way that we do this is we cut it down. And I will insert a photo here so you can see that I cut off the top of the bag and the bottom portion of the bag and then utilize that center uh, piece for the traveler's notebook and the bottom piece for this embellishment box. So let me get back to the box itself and I just wanna say that I cut out a couple of the uh, cut aparts from the collection and then I just fussy cut these and then I went ahead and layered it up on some colored cardstock from my stash and then cut around it again. And then the flowers is from also the embellishment page um, where I fussy cut around these flowers as well. And then I just went ahead and bunched them up. So I used one of the sheets from the collection in order to just fussy cut around the roses and then I just layered them up together uh, on top of each other, glued them together, and then I went ahead and laid that down on some black cardstock, fussy cut around it in its entirety, and then I wrapped around one of the cut aparts from the paper collection. I just used the opposite side, wrapped it around a couple of times so that it would look like um, a wrapping around a bouquet, and then I added a couple of flat back jemmies here. Okay, so the top is a piece of the cardstock from the collection. Then I went ahead and used some pom-pom trim around that. It is just the single sheet of, of the cardstock, I'm sorry, of the paper collection for the top. So you can see what the inside of that looks like. And then for the box itself, what I did is take that bottom section of the bag and then I went ahead and lined the inside with some gold foil paper that I had from my, in my stash from a different collection. And then I went ahead and layered the bottom of the box with some of the paper collection and then I went ahead and reused uh, some of the uh, bag ties. Now this one came with this gold version. So I took these out and I chose not to use this one, but you could have used this one just the same. Um, I just wanted to go with the hot pink. So I used that and then I also created this little insert, which I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out here. Okay, let me walk you through this. So this is like a little insert just like you have in some of the boxes for your Christmas ornaments. 
okay? So uh, this really just stacks together like this. You have some slits here. You have some slits here, the same. And then you have two of these. And this was just measured in order to be able to put together. So you have some slips on the bottom, some slits on the top, and then that just goes together just like so. Okay, very easy to pull in and out, very easy to modify just based on uh, the location of where you want your dividers to be in your box, and that's it. So, um, yeah, and then I just stuck a couple of embellishments in here uh, that I wanted to give away. Another idea is to put some candies in here, perhaps, um, but here's a couple little bottles that I had with some future shaker bits, some little clothes pins, some flowers, some little felt and foam hearts in here. Just put some little odds and ends in here, but I thought that that was cute. And I hope that you enjoy this tutorial and I look forward to seeing some of your embellishment box uh, em embellishment boxes soon. Oh, let me just show you a couple of the other uh, things. I went ahead and, and put this little topper on uh, to some flowers. I mixed and matched some of the items from my own stash, just cut out some sentiments and used some of the paper collections that I've shown in some of the recent photos on the Facebook group. But that's it. These are some of the cut aparts. I plan on making some cards uh, for some Valentine's Day cards and uh, sticking those in here as well. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Okay, everybody, let's get started with the tutorial. So I am taking this bag that measures five inches by 10 inches, and I am going to be this gift bag and I'm gonna be cutting it down. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure all these um, handles right here are at the top and I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off. There's an inside portion right here that we're just going to go ahead and trim off if you want to make sure and you need to cut it, you can cut it with your straight edge or whatever, but it's about one and uh, we'll just cut off one and a quarter inches to make it simple. So uh, with my cutter here, I'm just going to slip this through just like so. And I'm just going to grab this right up to where the edge is for this uh, folded under piece. I'm going to give it a chop and that is it, we're gonna set that aside. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide this back through. And what you wanna do is bend this back. It's completely fine that you're bending it back on itself. Very important, because you don't wanna cut off the other part of your, um, what's gonna be the bottom of your box. So the other thing is that you're gonna take this measurement right here and you wanna make sure if you have this size of a bag that you're at about three inches, okay? So, you know, not all these bags are made square. Um, you may have a little bit here and there. Now, it looks like I'm over three inches. The underneath portion is gonna be the correct measurement instead of the top one. So, I'm just gonna be snugging this right up against, in this case, my bar, and then I'm gonna give this a chop. And just like that, now we have this bottom portion of the sack or the bag, and this is what we're going to use to become our bottom of our box. And what you'll see is where that uh, fold was is what we're going to use as the location of where to fold over, just like so, okay, towards the inside. But we're gonna, for now, set this aside Put these two pieces that we chopped off. You can reuse this on a different project. Um, maybe a journal cover or a uh, traveler's notebook or something of that sort. But with this size, you effectively get a seven and a half inch long piece. So, 
Anyway, do that. And then, like I said, on the walkthrough, I also used uh, some of these handles for the handles on the box. I just used a different uh, bag on this one. So let's go ahead and get started. I am using, you wanna pull out two sheets of 12 by 12 paper. I've selected these two pages from the Heartfelt Creations Friendship Rose Collection. And I think what I'm gonna do is use the green for the inside of my box. Uh, for the sides perhaps, and then this page here for the top of my box and the inside bottom of my box. So I'm going to start with this page first. Now this is directional, so this is important. We want to make sure that with our uh, bottom of our box that we're creating this with the right uh, direction in mind. So this is my width here. It happens to be 10 inches in width and our 12 by 12 paper will allow us to make two scores that are each an inch a piece and have an inch fold over. But what we wanna do is make sure to cut this off so that this width dimension, which is five inches in width, also has an inch um, on either side for the top of the box. So because of that, we're going to turn this sideways and my measurements are at the top and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to seven inches, okay? So I'm gonna cut this down to seven inches just like so. And then I'm gonna be left with a piece that measures seven inches by 12 inches, okay? Now, this piece that we just cut off, that's gonna be the top of my box. This piece that we just cut off, if you would like to use that for the bottom of your box, you can do just that. You have enough space to do that. Just do quite a little bit of trimming and that is exactly what I am going to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one right now down to just under a hair under 10 inches. And then I wanna trim off just a slight hair off of this five inch measurement, just like that. So it will fit just like so onto the bottom of the box. Okay, so that will be the bottom. And this will be the top section that we will work with in just a second. But for now, set those aside. And then we are going to now work on the inside of our box bottom. So again, what we wanna do is make sure that we have some measurements for the sides of these, um, this bag. And you're gonna give it a little measurement here. You should be at just under two and a half inches. You can measure up from the bottom. Remember, we are folding over this half an inch, so just under two and a half inches. So that means I'm going to be cutting two pieces, in my case, that are just under 10 inches and just under two and a half inches, okay? So two and a half plus two and a half is five. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that first. And then I'm gonna trim this down to just under 10 inches long. Now I have two pieces that are gonna be able to be used as the sides inside. I think I'm gonna trim a hair, off of, a hair more off of this. So I'm gonna be left with nine and seven eighths inch. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and instead of two and a half, my little bit less than two and a half is gonna be two and three eighths like that. Now I'm going to cut the second one at also two and three eighths of an inch. Okay. Now what we have, I'm going to bring this back in, is this piece here, just like so, and this piece here, just like so. Okay. Now we're going to do these two end pieces right here. Bring back this page, just like 
so. And what we need is if you want to put the bottom of the inside of the box, you need to also have a five by 10 inch sheet. Okay, so I didn't use the same paper on my example here, um, but if you are planning on using the same paper inside all the way around and the bottom, then you'll want to use both sheets of this paper and then you can cut it down. Um, but you don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead and cut down this piece so that I can use it for my collection, which means, let's see, Nicole, I'm going to cut this down to just nine and seven eighths inch, just like that. And then I'm going to turn it. I'm going to cut it down to just shy of five inches. Now I have this piece that's going to be put right inside onto the bottom, just like so. You should be left with this strip, this strip, and this strip. And these can all be used, so you can make the most of one sheet of paper here. Okay, we still need to do the two sides. So I'm gonna use this one because it measures five inches. Let me see, can I, can I, can I? <laughs> Let me cut this off. And I am left with two inches and just over two inches, just over two inches. So this one is a little bit narrower. I'm gonna put that aside and I'm gonna be using this one right here that's five by just over two inches. That's two and about a sixteenth. And then I'm gonna cut this one down to five inches. What's gonna happen is that these are not quite as tall as the other ones, but we're still going to be folding over that top section of the bag onto it, so it'll be just fine. What we're doing here is a little bit of a dry fit, okay, to make sure that these go all the way down in the corners, okay, that it fits nicely, and we're not making uh, something here that is a little, bulging. Now the bag is going to want to pop in, but that's okay. We can straighten this out. To give this a little bit of thickness, what I did is cut a little piece of the lightweight chipboard, these same dimensions for the sides, and I put those underneath the paper, in between the paper and the bag, I should say. So let me get my um, lightweight chipboard, and I will be right back. All right, so the lightweight chipboard. I am going to go ahead and use the chipboard that came on the back side of this collection. Okay, we are using this collection up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out uh, the long lengths first. So let me do that. I have. Uh, two pieces that are two and three eighths inches. So I cut them down to four and three quarters. And then we cut this to nine and seven eighths of an, of an inch. Just like that. And now we'll cut this down to two and three eighths inches. Okay. We have our two side pieces. Those are going to be glued just like this. This and like so. Now we need these two pieces. So I'm going to bring this back and I'm going to cut this down to the five inches. 
And then I'm gonna cut these down to the two and, I'm gonna make it two and one sixteenth, just over two inches, because that's what my papers measured. And the insides of this box, just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these on. Okay, so I went ahead and glued my bottom section of paper onto the lightweight chipboard. I pieced two pieces together that I had left over from the back side of the paper pad uh, collection. And then I went ahead and glued that down in the bottom. Now I'm gonna be placing my side pieces inside of the bag bottom as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these up just like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide these in and down, just like so. I'm gonna turn this on its side. I won't be able to see real quick, but I'm just gonna use my bone folder and press this down so that I have just given a little bit of pressure uh, that glue so it can start to take hold there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the other sides real quick. Okay, so now I have my bottom and my sides in, and you can see it is now quite stiff uh, for this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over now that I have this on here, and I'm gonna go ahead and glue this paper down as well onto the bottom outside edge. Just like that. Okay, and to be able to press on it, I'm just gonna turn it back over and that way I can burnish it really well from this side. So, last thing I have to do now, you see this piece right here, I'm gonna take and use my finger to press in on the corner and tuck that down, just like so. I'm gonna work myself around on the corners, but before I do all of those, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my wet adhesive again and place some glue underneath that edge just like so. Just like that. Now I can go ahead and tuck this down. Roll that in, just like that. And you'll get a nice clean edge. for your box. And what you're gonna notice is that, remember that chipboard on the short ends is shorter in height than your long ends. So make sure that you don't, you roll in your long ends and then make sure that your box is straight on the side. Okay, don't have it shorter on uh, this short end than you would on your long ends. You want your box to, bottom to have a square edge. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish around all these edges to make sure that glue is burnished down. And now I have my box bottom. 
So I'm going to go ahead and change, swap this out for my scoreboard. And then we're going to work on the top. So for the top portion, remember it's 12 inches by 7 inches. It's 12 inches by 7 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and... Score it with the 12 inches at the top at one inch. And we're gonna rotate it to all four sides and each time we're gonna score it at one inch. Okay. Just like that. And just like that. Okay. You're gonna wanna just give it at least a finger burnish initially. If you want your box to be a little stiffer, then I would suggest you also put some lightweight chipboard uh, on this side, or you can double it up with another piece of paper as well. You would just need it to be five inches here by seven inches. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this one and see if I I like that any. So let me go ahead and cut this down. Okay. And that's gonna help give it some sturdiness. You could also put that lightweight chipboard in here if you wanted to, cut it to size, but I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna go with this. Oh, I think it's okay. This is just kind of a gift embellishment box. If you're gonna put something heavy on top of it, then you do wanna strengthen it, okay? But I only just cut out a few of the embellishment um, ephemera pieces from the collection, and that was it. So, not very heavy. I used a little bit of foam tape on there, but definitely not much. Okay, so now what we have is since we folded on all four sides at one inch, we have squares on each corner that we need to uh, deal with. And what we want to do, since this is directional paper, I would like for the fold, for this front fold to actually fold back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut on the seven inch side, just up to that score line, that first score line, and that's it. I'm gonna do it on this side as well. So we're not cutting those corners out, we're only cutting slits in them, just like so. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over. Maybe you can see it a little bit better here. We end up with Four cuts, just like this, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place some glue here and I'm gonna fold this just like so, to the outside, okay? The reason is I don't want this edge to show. If you wanna put it inside, you can do that as well. It's just personal preference, that's all. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and trim off a little bit more so that I've cut a little sliver out of each of these. Basically the width of that score line is what I wanna cut out. Like that. All right. 
I'm going to go back to my glue. And just give that a little glue. I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to hold it for a second, or you can put a clothespin on it as well. I should have said you might want to do a little bit more burnishing. Remember that this is just uh, decorative paper, so don't be too rough on it. It's not cardstock, but that is another option to use cardstock and then just cover it with the decorative paper as well. Okay, we're going to do this to all four corners here. Stands up pretty nicely. All right. And just like that, we have the top to our box. The box made from a little gift bag. And the first time you put this on here, it may be a little tight. There we go. go. One other thing that you might want to do, so I'm just going to rip mine apart because that's the way I do my crafts, <laughs> is put it on first and then go ahead and glue these on the side. That way you're not making it too tight. You know that you're not making it too tight, I should say. Okay, let me let that dry for a second. And now that's better. That will fit on and off much better. Okay. So, little tip, make sure I glue all of that down. Don't want any little piece coming up. Okay. And then the last things that we need to do is to cut our pieces for the inside. Now there are some preferences here that you may want to think through. Do you want your box divided all, you know, the whole length into certain sections? Uh, the way that I did it was just like so. This is just like your little things that you put together for your um, your Christmas ornaments, right? Okay, so we have these dividers to do. We need to punch the holes in the side of our box and put our ribbon through, and then we need to get going with the actual decorations, however you wanna do it, and filling these little boxes up, which is so fun. So uh, let me go ahead and take this back out. I'm going to use my crocodile, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the box, already has these fold lines from when it was a bag. If you can, let's see if you can see that, there you go. See the fold lines right there on the angle? We're gonna use those as a gauge to go ahead and place your holes. Now I am using the smaller of the two hole punches from this crocodile, and I'm just gonna stick that all the way down as far as I can, which is just before that line. And it's about uh, seven eighths of an inch down to the center of that hole. There you go, seven eighths of an inch, and about an inch and a half in, and this one a little bit less than that. But you know, that's good. Now I'm gonna take this ribbon, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it from the inside of the box back through just like that. You can tie a knot, or you can use these metal ends, whichever you prefer. It's going to be personal preference as far as w how long do you want your knots tied or your handles tied for, right? 
I don't necessarily want it to be that long, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot in my ribbon. I think that's still a little bit too long. I'm gonna tie another knot in my ribbon. And I think that is the, the size that I want. So I'm gonna double knot this. I hope you're getting some ideas from this project. That's what this is about. And that's that. Okay. And similarly, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Punch the holes down here. start at one end, run through the hole, and then go back again, just like that. Let me double knot this. So it's a little bit shorter. Whoopsie, made that one too tight. I definitely made that one too short, so let me just fix that real quick. Is that too short? Yeah, probably. Trying to make them somewhat even at least. Oh, look at me, now I've made it too tight. Where's my little pokey tool? Do you guys do this with your projects? There's a little boo-boo, you can fix it. I do have a whole other um, strap from the gift bag, so it's not big, that big of a deal. But I think we got it. Yay. Voila. I like that better. Okay. There's our two pieces, okay? Let's move on now to these. All right, so I have my pieces cut here for creating this little thing. I think I need to come up with a name for it. I don't know, the dividers, okay? There we go the dividers. Uh, what I did is I took two pieces of cardstock and you can glue those together first and then cut these out or cut them out and then glue them together. But I wanted something that had a little bit of thickness to it and I'm gonna add to this yet again. Um, you don't have to, but I want the inside of my box to have some additional color. So I'm choosing to use uh, the back side of this sheet, this cut apart sheet, and I'm gonna go ahead and glue these on here and then I will cut them out with my straight edge. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay. 
Okay, I will say make sure that you are using, if you're covering these, a paper that is really non-directional. Um, that way it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and cover these without um, having to worry about um, which way is up and you know being able to use your paper to the fullest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my mat here uh, to figure out what I want, uh, where I want my slits to be, where I want my um, dividers to be located. I don't want to put each of these dividers so close together that I can't get my fingers in to get embellishments out. Um, these are only two inches in height here. Uh, the reason that I did that was to make it easier to be able to grab things from these different compartment areas. So I didn't want it too high, uh, but I did want it high enough that it actually separated them. So um, the other thing is I want to make sure that I leave some space on either end so that it has some material to actually hold you know, nestle these, uh, this other divider going the opposite direction in. So with that being said, um, I am putting this as if it was this direction. It would set down in the box. Make sure that I'm in screen. Yep, okay. So these or the longer ones that would go in this direction. Okay. And these are the shorter ones that would go in this direction. Okay, so uh, this is four and a half inches in length. I'm gonna go ahead and measure uh, just from the, um, let's see, three eighths to a half inch mark from this outer edge and the same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and measure three eighths and half an inch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this section out right here. And I hope that you can see that. But remember, it's two inches tall, so I'm going all the way up to one inch in. And then I'm gonna cut out this section here on both of these. So I'm gonna cut out those cross-hatched areas right there. You can use your Tim Holtz scissors for this perfectly fine. We're just going up to that edge. And then we're going to trim this section off just like that. Okay. Just like that. And then you can use this one as a little template for your next one. It's a pencil, handy dandy tool. those little segments out just like so okay okay these are going to be these segments right here so because we have these shaped like an M we need the other ones to be cut from the top Okay, and what we want to do 
is line this up, both of these, so that they're at the same measurement. And this measures five inches in length. Similarly, we are going to go the same thing, three eighths and half an inch up. And we're gonna go up to that one inch mark again. And cut those out. Just like that. So let me go ahead and cut that out. this again as a template that little piece back and just give it a snip off okay so now we have these two that are matching and we're going to be able to slip those in just like so okay now Now we have a box like this. If I want to add another divider, I can surely add another divider. And I think I will do that because I have some paper left over. So let me go ahead and do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two right here and I think what I'm gonna do is put one right smack dab in the middle. So it's five inches in length that means it is two and a half to the center and I want to go just a smidgen on either side. Does that look like it's even? Why does that look like it's even? Two and a half. Yeah, that's the middle. Let's go here and here. And you can do all your precise measurements. You can use your Tim Holtz ruler. But, you know, Nicole just eyeballs it with a pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and snip that one off. I'm going to use this as a template. Cut this one down. together. Oops, Nicole's wrong one. And I need to make one more. I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and made my third one, the divider, so that I have two different compartments on this and now it's time to go ahead and get this put inside of my box. So I'm gonna be putting that right down in my box like so, pushing it over and to me it makes it feel like you have space for some goodies over here that are smaller, maybe some cards and envelopes that you wanna make uh, and gift away as a lovely Valentine's uh, present, maybe some Valentine's themselves and then decorate the top of that box, however you desire. 
I hope you've enjoyed this project and I look forward to seeing some of your projects soon. Until next time, everyone, happy crafting you all. Bye.